Next in the tank, an online innovator hoping for a shark to take a bet on his business. Hi Sharks, my name is Michael and I'm the co-founder and CEO of BetSwaps.com, the world's first sports tipping marketplace. I'm here today seeking a $200,000 investment in return for a 10% stake in the company. I want you to imagine it's Melbourne Cup Day. You might not be much of a punter, but you're heading to the races and you want to have a bet. You don't want to just pick horses at random, so what could you do? You would head over to BetSwaps.com where you could navigate to our leaderboard and filter by horse racing, which allows you to compare our top horse racing tipsters side by side. You can easily see their win-loss record, the profit they've made, and the return on investment you would have seen following their tips. You can then see who has tips available for sale and securely purchase these tips and receive them instantly. This allows you to bet like an expert and increase your chances of winning on the day. It's not just horse racing we cover, but more than 40 different sports and over 100,000 different betting markets. So Sharks, who wants to back a winner and join the BetSwaps team today? Uh, sorry Michael, I'm Stephen, yeah. how are you doing? Yeah, where, where, whereabouts are you from? I'm from South Australia. Oh, good stuff. Adelaide or? Yeah, Adelaide. Yeah, nice. I, I was determined to hate this when I saw the uh, when, I, when I saw that up there because I, I've got a real issue with the way that we've actually taken on especially digital gambling in this country, so I don't like it at all. But this isn't that, this is tipping. Yeah, it's tipping. There's, there's no betting. We're not a bookmaker at all. So this is in fact selling tips and then they go off somewhere else and bet. Yes. So you're selling information. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Why wouldn't the existing players in the marketplace, which are the online players, yep. why don't they just do this as a side thing? So that, that's a good point, but the mentality for sports bettors and tippers is, is kind of an us first them competition thing. So if a bookmaker started this up, I think there would be that little bit of a thing in the back well, of the mind. Well, there's a conflict of interest. Yeah, it's a conflict of interest. You're supposedly helping people win, but you're making money when Bookmakers when they have a terrible reputation for the way they treat their customers. It, it's yeah. really quite adversarial. Michael, how old are you? I'm 24. So you're valuing your new business at two million bucks? Yes, that's correct. That's an interesting number. The way I look at it is we've made $100,000 in revenue this year. Oh, okay, so that's, you actually made 100K free and clear. Is 100K yep. all tip selling or is there affiliate advertising revenue yeah, in there so, as well? So we actually work very closely with all of Australia's betting companies. A lot of our revenue stream actually comes from advertising through those guys. We advertise their, their promotions, their bonuses, their markets they offer, their kind of unique quirks that they all offer to try and gain market share. And in return, we made $25,000 last month alone. Michael, yes. I'm really excited. Thanks. You're a tipster? Yeah. Tell me what the forecasts are or your, or your bet on next year in terms of your revenue stream. But at the end of the day, what is going to be your take home pay? So we're forecast for a million dollars in revenue next year. And One that... million dollars yep. in revenue? All right, mate. I'm in. 200 grand, 35%. Thank you for that offer. I'd like to say I'm stuck pretty firmly at 10%. Oh, you're going to be losing today, then. 35% <laughs> is, is just a bit hard. Oh, that was a quick no. Hey. You've got a good start somewhere, haven't you? Michael, you've got to remember, though, your business, you haven't really made the profit to value the... I know that there's a, a potential of actually scaling it to incredible heights, but it's potential, it's blue sky, it's, it's not reality. So I'm out. Thank you. Anyone else got anything to add? Yes, I'm giving you 200,000 for 30%. I don't get the valuation at 2 million, but I, I would bet 200,000 on you at 30% uh, because I think I'd bring a lot of value and save you a lot of money in shortcuts in getting there. I was involved in a website that, that got to a, a billion and 60 dollars in seven years online but there's a lot of traps on the way. So, uh, you know, um, slightly better than Steve's offer, but you won't get me at 10%.
really like what you're doing, but I also know that there is going to be um, bumps in the road. It's not going to be as smooth sailing as you think. Um, there is definitely going to be setbacks. So I know what I can bring to the party in terms of growing your business. I'm going to offer you 200,000, but knowing the value I will bring to your business, it's for 20% of your business. Thank you, that's a great offer. So it's pretty simple, Michael. What you have is you're a numbers man, you're a spreadsheet man. I've met plenty of people like you who are passionate, they're focused, they absolutely know the area they're playing in. 200,000, 15%. Oh, come on now. <laughs> That's cheap. I bring more value in terms of infrastructure. There's a couple of young guys that live in Melbourne. Yep. They have the largest global trading platform for international currency. I'd like to introduce you to them. I'm the only one that's grown a website that was worth a billion dollars in the US, number one in its space. And I'm currently involved in a learning website that has 1.3 billion downloads. I'll just throw that in. You've got three sharks that want to get involved with you. Do you have a preference of who you'd like to go with? Michael Timms has stirred up a frenzy in the tank with his online sports tipping business. Steve's offer of 35% was rejected outright, but Michael still has three sharks in play. Michael, let me give you a summary of what's on the table. You have Andrew is 200,000 for 30%, Naomi's 200,000 for 20%, Glenn is 200,000 for 15%. All right, I thought I'd even things up. I'll, I'll come back in at a, uh, I'm going to come back. I'll, I'll reduce mine. I think I do bring a lot to this. I've got numerous investments. I've got investments in the US, not to the scale Andy's got, but you know we're, we're, we're very much in digital spaces as well. So I'm willing to I'm willing to bring myself back down to, to Andy's level. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? To, to Andy's <laughs> to Andy's amount. No, no disrespect intended to to to, to 30 percent. So you, you got two at 30 there. 30 percent is just too high. I can tell you right now that we're not going to reach that number. 30 percent is just just too high. Gee, he wants us, Andy. What's your counter offer? <laughs> Look, I'm going to hold firm close to 10%. It's not much of a negotiation. <laughs> Michael, it's not dumb money you're getting. We're talking the execution risk that we're pricing in with our offers. We're not pricing in in three years. We're pricing in today and maybe a little bit in the future. But we have to price today because you might, you might balls it up tomorrow. Michael, you need to make a call. All right, um, I'll take a bit of a, a punt and just put it out there. Anyone going to come down to 10% and we can do a deal right now and get in early for 200,000. Anybody like to take bets on what I'm <laughs> going to say next? <laughs> if you were five months down the track and had generated $500,000, but you're just too early. I'd like to say we've only just started looking to raise money now and since we've put out the word only two weeks ago that we're looking for money, we've had so much interest come in. So are you saying you've actually other investors out there on the hook ready to go? Yes. They're knocking at the door waiting for the house to be built. I'll flick the 15, mate. Right? Wow, that's a massive drop. <laughs> Steve and Glenn, would you be willing to work together? Yes, we would be. So. Good Queensland backing for an Adelaide boy. Absolutely. Beautiful. Let's do it. Okay, well done. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, Michael. Well done, Michael. Very impressive. I have Thank to you very much. Partner, another Thank deal you. done. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Hey, you know, he didn't want to go to the US. It's OK. Didn't even imagine that two would be interested, yet alone getting two on board. So yeah, really, really stoked. Do you think you've picked the right sharks? I do. I came in really wanting to get Steve, and Glenn really sold me on his value add to the business. 
Next to face the sharks, an inventor who wants to shine new light on an age-old medical problem. Hi, my name is Jennifer Holland and I'm the sole owner and inventor of ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. I'm asking for $76,000 for 10% equity in my company. In December 2009, I took my baby to the doctors. He seemed to be suffering from a sore throat, so the doctor got out his wooden tongue depressor in one hand and his handheld torch in the other. He then asked me to restrain my child whilst he pried open his mouth with the wooden tongue depressor. This was quite distressing. I walked out that day wondering why. Why had this traditional method not been modernised? Introducing ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. ThroatScope is a one-hand operated device with a light source located inside the mouth for fast, accurate diagnosis. ThroatScope is a first of its kind for oral cavity examination worldwide. ThroatScope has been designed for GPs, hospitals and the general public. You simply take the disposable blade and slide it onto the reusable handle. This will automatically activate the light. You take one hand, hold your patient's head in place whilst completing your oral cavity examination. Once you have finished, a one flick action removes the blade and extinguishes the light. Thank you. Thank well you. Great done. job. Oh. You did a good job. So, Jennifer, that was 76,000 for 10%, just to clarify. Correct, yes. Right, okay. And there's nothing in the marketplace like it. There is nothing currently on the market for in home oral cavity examination. This is the first product. Wow. Jennifer, what's your background? Is it in the medical area? Uh, no, it's not in the medical area. I'm actually a financial accountant is my background. What does, it, what does it cost you to make? The full complete unit, one blade and the handle, $3.39. What are you going to sell them for, roughly? In the pharmacies, $29.95 and $9.95 to GPs and hospitals. How much does the disposable piece cost? About 24 cents. So tw it's a 24 cent bit that you pretty well you use once, you toss it in the bin. That's right. The shame of it is that compared to the cardboard one the doctors use, they're about, what, probably two cents? Two to four cents. Yeah, so yeah. it's ten times the price times the multiples. It starts to sort of add up for them. How do you solve that problem? That's only based on producing 10,000 units, that price. So I'm hoping once it, the you know manufacturing goes up, the price is going to come down. How long does the battery last for? The battery can last up to five years, so it's yeah, just a normal no, battery. Just like that. If I left it like that, how long would it, how long uh, would it last I for? I think it would probably last a fair... If you left it on... Have you tried it? I haven't left it on. So it'll last... <laughs> I think it'll last a, a GP probably one to two years, depending on how many times they use it. The idea is for future, actually, in my patent, I have it as a rechargeable docking station for the device. What is it you're going to be using the uh, $76,000 for, Jennifer? I'm asking for the money for tooling and for to produce 5,000 units. This is a prototype. It's not a commercial product in the package ready to go. So that's my next step. Right. So you've asked for $76,000, which gives you a valuation of $760,000. Um, how much of your time are you spending in the business and how much do you intend to spend in the business? I get up in the morning, I turn my computer on, I work. I don't stop working. So we can count on you, you to be full can. time in this business? Definitely. I'm not going anywhere. Now, can I ask, is your patent shining light through perspex. That's the essence of your paper. It is it's for the... Nothing to do with putting it in someone's throat. It's also the attachment and how it couples together to um, turn on and off the switch. I mean, Steve, you're more of an expert in that area, but I would have thought that's quite interesting. Uh, is there any medical device issues around this, um, Jennifer? It's a class one medical device, so the regulation is very easy. So it's a, a approval not required effectively, is that what they're saying? Pretty much. Listen, I think I know where I'm at. I like the fact that you've solved a problem, but in my case, I'm generally um, a little concerned about markets uh, like the medical profession where they're highly regulated. So it's not an area where I like to invest. Okay. But I applaud your uh, ingenuity and I'm sure you'll find some customers. I'm out. I just think it's fantastic, the innovation. 
But it re is really, really early stage. And um, it's a wonderful idea that we don't yet understand a commercial application for. So for that reason, I'm out. I have to say I admire what you've done enormously. To sort of have an idea and then take it from an idea and, and then have a, even a prototype with patents and, and trademarks. The thing that I think that might actually be a barrier for you though is that it's 10 times the price of what they've, also, they've got currently. And it's an education for them to go, okay guys, get rid of that at two cents, put this in even if it's a 10 cents or 15 cents. It's just such a big step, barrier step, but please don't take that away as anything other than, than my admiration for what you've done. So congratulations getting it this far. I wish you all the very best, but I'm out. Did we poke into any uh, projected sales revenues or anything like that? I mean, do you have any clue about that? I do. Uh, um, my projections for year one, based on um, selling about 30,000 units and about um, a million blades, is about 400,000 after tax. You've got you to sell over 40,000 units gross profit just to get near your valuation mm. of your first year. So it's a big number. Mm. John, Steve? Your single mind and the, your drivenness to sort of participate in this business is fantastic. And I really, really I like that. Full time tick. Your, your background for me isn't technical for how I'd like it, but it doesn't matter that much. This isn't a very technical device. So that's not really going against you. So I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think, though, I'm going to come back and just, just keep collecting my thoughts. Jennifer, it feels like you've sacrificed a lot to get to this point. I think that you not only know your numbers, which is your background, but you have looked at the market, you've looked at the product. I wish it was a little bit further progressed. It is slightly premature, but unfortunately, I'm out. Steve. Is it just me, is it? It is just you. Bugger. What, what do you expect, what do you expect from me, aside from any cash in this arrangement? I, I'm hoping for your connections. I know you have companies in the medical device space. Software. And I'm hoping that you can help me, and I know that you're a startup guy. And stand up guy, I thought she said. <laughs> You're a stand up, stand up guy. I have an, a daughter who was diagnosed anaphylactic to peanuts and eggs. And um, she, every time I go to the hospital, it takes two nurses to hold her down while a doctor pries her mouth open with a wooden tongue depressor. I stand there thinking, if, my, if they just had my device, eight times out of ten, my children will open their mouth for that device over a wooden tongue depressor. Can I, can I explore that for one second? I, I've, just, I've just got something. So kids prefer having the, like, the, this pretty thing. Nice, shiny object. In their mouth, and they do mouth. the paddle pop stick. On, on balance, there's far more acting against me making this investment than there is for it. Except the fact that kids will think this is a lightsaber. Um, uh, there are things that concern me, lots of things that concern me. This, this is amazingly over-engineered, I mean, it's nice. But honestly, you throw half this away and you can probably make it for a fifth of much, to be honest. So. I don't know of the regulatory implications of this, right, which, is, which can make this thing all of a sudden expensive, if not unsaleable in some markets. It is a class one medical device. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah. So I have a piece of software that we're trying to get regulated at the moment. It's regarded as a medical device as well. And, you know, so I know how crazy the rules are in respect to that. I'm standing here. I'm ready. I'm, 
I've been pushing this for four years. I've had four seizures in five years. Nothing is going to stop me. If that didn't, nothing will. I'd be willing to look at making an offer. Now, you have to know my background. I'm telecoms. Right. I know. All right. I'll do 76,000 bucks for 30% of the company. And then I'd look at a royalty with respect to that. So I would look at, let's say, a 5% royalty on the sale, up to the repayment of $76,000, up to the full repayment, after which the royalty would disappear. I would be left with the 30% equity. I think the royalty is counterproductive to the company to be taking funding out when we're going to need it most. Would you drop the royalty and I'll 30 percent? I'll be happy to do the deal, but drop the royalty for now. No. He's going to own 30 percent of the company, so he's not going to let it sit there and if it needs more cash, as long as you've got the business heading in the right direction. We're going to put this lightsaber in the hands of as many doctors, nurses, mums and dads as we possibly can. So that's what we want to do, right? So what's your answer? Just say yes. Yes. Good. Thanks very much, Thank you. Cheers. Awesome. Well done. What a great presentation. Thank you. you With my lightsaber. Well done. You're Thank extraordinary. You. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. I knew before I came into the tank that Steve was the tech guy and I'm just so excited to be working with him and moving forward with our business together. Oh. Well done. She's good. She is great. It's just got that tenacity. Well done. Nice work. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic job. You are so awesome. <laughs> My name's Adam Dubrick. And I'm Lee Warren. We've come to the Shark Tank today asking for a $280,000 investment, and for that, we're prepared to give a 20% equity stake in our business. I'd like to introduce you all to the Cricket Cooler. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. Summer for me meant down the beach playing beach cricket with family and friends. We'd use anything as a substitute for wickets. We used bins, body boards, deck chairs, whatever we could find on the day really. It was a few years later and I was down the beach with Adam and we were playing beach cricket that day and I said to him afterwards, why don't we put a set of stumps on a cooler? And the idea of the cricket cooler was born. The cricket cooler itself has a set of stumps at the front which rotate forwards and backwards. So they act as the stumps when you're playing beach or park cricket, and then they act as the handle when you're wheeling to and from your destination. It has cup holders in the back for the wicket keeper and the batsman. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's genius. <laughs> Does it keep beer cold? It absolutely keeps beer cold. Did you bring any proof of that? <laughs> He's thirsty. We didn't bring any proof. <laughs> Steve. But you can take one of these home, you can put your own beer in it later. <laughs> So we've spent a few years now working on development. We've secured patents and trademark protections in most cricketing nations around the world. And we're at the stage now where we've got a product where we can stand beside at a high quality and a most cost-effective way. <clears throat> so could you tell me the offer again? So it was 20% for... A $280,000 investment. 280. Yeah. Mm. So how have your sales been? OK, so we, we launched in September on an online campaign. So we got our factory to produce 1,000 coolers. We learned in a couple of weeks that wasn't going to be enough, so we put the factory back into production for 5,000 coolers. We've now sold 4,000 coolers. At what price? 
Uh, we're selling for eighty nine ninety five. What do they cost you to make, mate? Our landed cost is around forty dollars plus GST. Okay, forty dollars plus GST. You own a hundred percent between you. No, we have a, a silent partner as well. Oh. How much is that? So we split thirty three percent each. Oh, the silent partner is thirty three percent. Right. So you're offering twenty percent of the whole company. Correct. So therefore, all three of you will be diluted back. Yes. Correct. What else have you done? Where have you come from? What's your backgrounds before you started this? Yeah, look, both sales. We um, originally met each other working for Cadbury Sweeps. I still continue to do some sales consulting work. Um, and Lee yeah. is in sales as well. When are you going to work into this business full time? Is there a tipping point? At the moment, this is, it is fairly light touch in a lot of ways, right? So we put a lot of time and work into this. We work 70, 80 hours a week when we take our day jobs and we take this. Day job's about 150,000, so we can live on that. Our families come first. However, this comes second. You want us to put in 280,000 bucks for 20% of the company, and you're not going to work on it full time unless you can go from your current wage right now into a wage in this business on an equivalent level. If you want to be a diet entrepreneur, that's actually something that says you're, you're not an entrepreneur. You, 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 you want safety and you want no risk. No, I, 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 in all due respect, I disagree. We have taken a significant amount of risk to get it to this point. If we're going to invest in a business that you've asked us to value at $1.4 million, you've got to buy into this, guys. Yeah. Right? And honestly, ripping out 150000 bucks a piece in the early stage. That just to me says, I want to transfer from a comfortable job to a comfortable job. It might be shocked to understand what at least me and I know some of the others on this panel actually lived on while they're building their businesses. And in equivalent terms, it's a damn sight less than 150,000 bucks. It's really not about we can't be bothered. In a heartbeat, we would love to. It's about our current circumstance and it's managing that. Yeah, I, yeah. I know, but going, because I, I must yeah. admit, I'm in his camp, yep. right? Um, yep. We had a point in um, my business in the early yeah. days where we needed more capital. We, and the only thing, like most Australians, is, was our family home. Yeah. We sold our family home. We moved into our office. I was sharing a bedroom with my kids. I never took a salary for three years, and my first year salary was $30,000. Yeah. And the only reason I did that is because every cent needed to go into the business to grow it. It also needed every second of the waking hours that we had. So focus and execution it deliver results. The reality of you not working in the business and what it requires you to get in that business is a warning sign for me that I've been burnt with similar things in the past before and I promise not to do it again. Would it change your decision if one of us committed to that? Adam and Lee are feeling the pressure. They're pitching a product called the Cricket Cooler, but one shark has already bowled them a wrong one. The reality of you not working in the business and what it requires you to get in that business is a warning sign for me. Would it change your decision if one of us committed to that? I said I'd never again invest in someone with that attitude. Sorry, guys, I'm out. Look, for us, this is not about having a product that we don't think we can make money out of. This is about getting access to some working capital so that we can produce enough coolers to fulfil our demand. I think for me, it's, there's something that I'm not going, ah, oh, I've got to have it. And, and also that, that real um, someone in it full time and then how that works with cash flow. And for that reason, I'm out. You, you mentioned patents. We've got patents approved in Australia, New Zealand. And then we've got trademarks for the UK, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. Have you got the patents for India? We do, we've got a patent pending in India. So we filed it in 2008 in India, um, still waiting. We're hoping that it comes through. We understand hope's not a strategy, but yeah. you know, it's a, it's a challenging market in its own right. So we are waiting for, for an approval. What worries me is I'm nervous about silent partners I don't know. And India, of course, is the biggest cricket market in the world and there's uncertainty there. So for all those reasons, I wish you luck, but I'm out.
I'm concerned this could be a one-hit wonder. But I'm looking to invest in businesses that have recurring revenue and long-term future success. There's not enough certainty, so for those reasons, I'm out. Then there was one. <laughs> then there was one. I'm looking for people with passion. And you tick that box. I'm looking for people who are persistent. And there's no doubt you've done that with your R&D. <laughs> yeah. You have a product that will make people laugh. And that's what we need more than anything. I'm also in an interesting position that I know somebody who runs the largest promotional company in Australia and they are always looking for the next thing to take to their clients. So I am gonna make you an offer of some sort. I will give you, or I'll offer you, there's never a gift. <laughs> this is always an investment. $80,000 for 20% with a 200,000 loan for a licensing deal. So you get your 200, and $80,000 cash which you need, but the licensing deal is dependent on a volume sale. So it effectively will appear to you like a loan. So the 200 is, they, they use that for stock for the licensing deal? They need the money to get the stock, yep, and they okay. need the money to get additional manufacturing, yes. yep. so they need the money right now. So it's still but cash I you're gonna get. I introduce them to just one person, I can make that money back, be a 20% investor, and we're all sweet. Which, which is and a, it might be a very short-term thing. Which is, a, which is a good deal for you. Look, it's a fantastic deal. Yes. I think we can. We don't want to devalue our business. We genuinely feel as if we've, we've valued it accurately. We, we honestly do. You're not going to take it. We genuinely feel like we valued it accurately. Now, I, I think we'd be comfortable with that deal, but at a 10% equity in the business on go. So my offer is, 20% for $80,000 with a $200,000 loan. You're most welcome to take a moment. Can we take a moment? Yeah, of course no, I appreciate you can. that. I think yeah. it's... <sighs> it's, it's essentially an interest-free loan over two years. We're going to make a killing in the next two years, but 20% is a lot. I have no doubt you'll get your money back on this product. The question is what happens next. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're... it might be a one-hit wonder. Yeah. I might introduce them to one or two people. They get some big sales. Yeah. You know, it's a fun product. I've played cricket on the beach. Yeah. I've used all the stuff. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a deliberation outside, as you are aware. And Naomi, we really need the capital now. We're going to make a bucket load of money for you and for us. And we've got yourself a deal. Hey! <laughs> Good on you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Adam. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. 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 Thank Well done, well man. Done. Awesome deal. That was intense. <laughs> First up, a scientist who wants to sell the sharks on the food of the future. My name is Sky. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Sydney. I never used to have a Barbie doll when I was a little kid. I always used to be out in the garden collecting bugs and getting really dirty. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an entomologist, which is a bug scientist. This is my giant burrowing cockroach. Her name's Woodstock and she's about 10 years old. She likes to eat eucalyptus leaves and I take her out to do educational shows. 
Some of the bugs actually live for quite a long time, so they have really, really interesting personalities. She actually likes to blow kisses and she likes to be pet as well, just like a cat or a dog would. The challenge for me definitely has been trying to get Australian consumers over that initial ick factor when it comes to bugs. They're very nutritious. I think they'll either love it or they'll hate it, so I'm prepared either way. Hello Sharks, my name is Sky and my company is called Edible Bug Shop. I'm asking for a $170,000 investment for a 20% equity in our company. Yes, that's right, I'm about to sell you on all these fantastic edible bugs. So for the past seven years, we've been breeding edible insects specifically for human consumption. We've developed a patent pending uh, insect flower as well, which is high in protein. It's low in fat, it's got lots of good micronutrients in it, like calcium and iron as well. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why should I invest in edible insects? Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the year 2050, the world's population will grow to over 9 billion people. And traditional forms of livestock that we have at the moment just won't be enough to support this population. Edible insects are definitely the future of food and we aim to stamp ourselves as number one in the world in edible insect production. Now, I welcome any questions that you have and if you would like to try some bugs today, I definitely welcome that as well. I'd love to try some. What would you like to try? <laughs> I would say the cookie. A cookie? <laughs> it's a good starter because it's not too um, bug-like, yes. <laughs> What am I about to try? What, what is this? So this is a chocolate chip cookie, but we replace some of the flour with the insect flour. So it makes it high in protein, it's high in calcium and iron as well. I'll pass today, but yeah. I'll think about it. I might come up and grab one later if I get hungry. Mm. Not bad. Can you give me some comparisons, please? If I've got cricket flour or, or insect flour, yep, yep. and the nutritional benefit of that compared to regular flour, what is the benefit? Yep. So the, um, the insect flour is 65% protein. Um, it's got double the amount of calcium as milk, three times the amount of iron as spinach does. So it's kind of a superfood. How do you know? Have you done clinical trials? We've done, yeah, we have all the, all the um, NADO accreditation. The, 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 so. the carbohydrate content of that uh, flour? There's about uh, 5.6 grams per 100 grams. Is that all, really? Yeah. So, and can you make bread from it? So what sort of flour is it? So it's just basically we dry the crickets and we grind them up into a fine powder. So it doesn't replace regular flour, it's more of a supplement item. For instance, with the normal cookie recipe, you'd replace about a third of the regular flour with the insect flour. So, so what, what is the cost to produce a kilo of Bug flour. Um, so it costs us about six dollars per kilo. Wow. Okay. Um, and then we would sell that at the moment for about eighty dollars a kilo. Excuse me, eighty. Yeah. Eight zero dollars per yep. kilo. Oh, nice. It's a good margin. How do you think you can overcome what's going to be a natural resistance that people don't like the thought of eating bugs? It's hard for people because you don't necessarily think of a cow when you're eating a steak. It doesn't look the same. I definitely see the insect flower as the way of the future with insect eating. So you're getting all the nutritional benefits of eating the bugs without having to look at them. Four out of five sharks have tried that. I actually think you've got 80% market acceptance in some respects. I mean, that's one way to look at this. When I ride my Vespa, I eat a bug or two, believe me, on a Saturday morning, but <gasps> I'm just not a bug eating guy. And I think for that reason, I'm out. Well, I think you can't sell it unless you're willing to try it. So yeah. that's probably a right option. <laughs> that's why I'm out. You got any vital statistics with respect to your sales? And yeah, whatnot? so our turnover for last year was 150,000. That was 60% profit, so 90,000. After all expenses are taken out of the business, you're keeping 90,000 bucks? Yeah. yeah, okay. Apart from the money, what are the other pieces that you think you're missing? I'm an entomologist and a food scientist. I've got a science brain. I kind of need someone to help me expand the business so that, you know, it's more appealing to a wider audience, not just scientists. And you want to work with this full time, 100 per cent? Well, I work in my business full time at the moment. 
Is there anything in that process that is patentable, that is unique to you, that you can keep? Yeah, so we've got the, the bug flower is actually patent pending at the moment, so um, the patent will be pushed through on that soon. So competitors, who are your competitors in the Australian market? Um, or nobody. world market? Because people would be importing bug flower. No, um, you can't import edible insects into Australia because of our strict quarantine requirements. So there is no other competitor in this market but you? Yes. You tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of what makes a fledgling business a big business, but where it leads me to is the valuation. You're valuing the business at 850. I'm tempted, but I'm I'm not tempted at your current valuation. I'm uh, I think I'm I'm at the point where I would make an investment, but I, I would want to bring your valuation down. I don't really think it's unrealistic to have a valuation like that considering, you know, the range of products that we have already established and the, the valuation of the patent as well, which is the main thing. I mean, it is very tempting. But I do think the valuation on your business is the, is the challenge. Um, I'm out. So Sky, I do see competition for you. So whilst there might not be somebody in the direct space, anything that is a protein enhancer that's, that's not this is actually competition to you. At this point, it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. The big issue here is the fact that it, it's, it's niche. It's still, this is not gonna be accepted in every household in Australia. I think you need to take a good hard look at your valuation. I'll, uh, I'll get out now, thank you, I'm done. So where are we? Janine? I will make you an offer. I will give you the 170,000, but I want half. So, 50%, 170,000. I do like that Janine has the expertise in the food area, which is obviously more beneficial to the business that we have at the moment. But I think 50% is a little bit much to give away, seen as all of the work that we've put into the business to start with. So, would you consider 30%? I wouldn't know. Because the, the critical thing is you need people in the space, in retail, in food, and I truly think that where I've been in the last 14 years in this space, I do think that that is actually a very fair valuation for where it is and what we can also add. Yes, there's no question that you've put your blood, sweat and tears in this and this is your baby, and I, and I don't want to diminish that in any way, shape or form. And I do think that, you know, I do, th I do honestly also think it's high risk for me because I think it might be just that tweak too early, even though your sales are saying it's, it's sort of coming. I love the protection. I think you're a very intelligent woman. And so I think we could work really well together. But I think for us to, to really drive it, I do think I need to be an equal partner. Congratulations. Just think about the other 50% being worth millions of dollars. Don't worry about the value. <laughs> That's, right. That's well, what you've got will to think be. about. It will be. It will be. Well Thank done. You. I was really considering whether giving 50% away was the right thing to do. And I think um, we've come away with a good partner. She has a quality that's very rare, I think, which is that she's very smart, she's done a great job, but she's still prepared to learn. She's she fine. will listen and she will... Next in the tank, a fast food innovator, catering for customers who can't make up their minds. I think that there's a potential here to make millions, even hundreds of millions of dollars. Hi, Sharks. I'm Mark Murray, and I'm here today to make history. 
by revealing to you and the rest of the world for the first time ever, the ham dog. <laughs> Wow. I'm offering a 25% share for all the rights and revenue associated with the ham dog. Though in return, I do want an investment of $1. Wow. The ham dog is a unique combination of a hamburger <laughs> and a hot dog <laughs> in the one bun. It's so simple, the patty's split down the middle, sausage goes in the centre, load it up with your favourite ingredients, bang, there's a party in your mouth. So suit you, Steve, this one. <laughs> now, there is a very serious side to this product for any investor. Not only is it the most unique fast food product in the world, it is the only burger in the world that has earned the protection of a registered Australian design and the only burger in the world that has been granted a United States patent and today being shown for the first time in the history of the world. My vision is to take the ham dog to market by either selling the rights and the patent or licensing it to a food or burger chain that finally wants like a draw card product that the competitors can't copy. Does that mean that you have no intention of building the business? All you want to do is get rid of the concept? That's exactly right, John. I want to get rid of the concept, either license this or just or handball it totally to a food or burger chain that is looking at it right now saying we need this because, again, there's nothing like it. I have to tell you, it smells good. Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> it does actually look quite appetising. As you know, I'm in this space, yes, so I know this space very, very well. Clearly, you've done a huge amount of market research to know that the consumer wants it. I believe there's a place for it, I mean... No, no, but have you done the research? OK, I... Around about 18 months or two years ago, I put a Facebook page up. The next day, I pulled the page down at 13, 1,400 likes. This is the sort of product that will self-market and go viral Why because you pull the page down? Because I don't want the public to see this. But you've got a patent, so you're protected and you're worried about the public seeing it. Well, I've always been worried, Steve because even if someone did see this and go and copy it, I've got to cough up the money to fight them. In which case, if I invest, I've got to cough up the money to fight them, which is even better for you. How much money have you spent on this uh, culinary revolution? <laughs> Steve, I've, uh, I've tipped in probably about around the $5,000 mark. I can believe that. OK, yep. yeah. So um, why a dollar then? This doesn't need money now. What it needs... It, I need help. If I picked up the phone and rang a big burger chain or something, they're just going to hang up and think I'm insane. But if I can get somebody that has contacts in that area and is respected in that way... Am I going to be going and knocking on Burger King's door and saying, hey... Yes, yes, you are. Wow. Because yes. I've done my work. I'm not expecting you to put two or three years of, of time into this product. Look, who knows? that They could be lined up now watching this, so all you have to do tomorrow is answer the phone and say, yes, we can broker a deal. If not, it's going to cost you some, some time and it's going to cost you a dollar. You know, there's something... I, I've, I've got to say something here. I think my time is worth a lot more than to yeah. actually what's required to invest in this business. I think my reputation is worth more than what it actually takes <laughs> to be associated with this business. So in that respect, I'm, I'm, I'm out, I'm done. I'm cooked, put a fork in me. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, but thanks, Steve. <laughs>
I'm a granddad, and um, and I spend a lot of time in the States, and I've got a five-year-old granddaughter. And I I'm have in... too, Andrew. I've got a five-year-old granddaughter myself. Yeah, and I'm in Disney World about six weeks ago, and she's with her friend, and we're having this long argument because she wants a hamburger and a hot dog. <laughs> I don't think this is a business proposition. I think this is a punt. And I'm interested in having a punt with you. So I'm prepared to give you $2 for 50%. Double, I wasn't expecting double. $2 for 50%, but I, I will work with you. I think it's a children's menu item. It might have enough novelty factor that we might get at least $4 back. No, I'm kidding. We might make some money out of it, but I'll offer you $2 for 50%. Uh, Andrew, I would love to work with you. Okay, well, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's make some money and make these guys regret that they did yes. their best, you know. <laughs> Take it easy. Thanks, mate. All right, Appreciate see you. It. Cheers. And you guys, you know. We will laugh. When I'm the hand dog billionaire, they'll, they'll laugh the other side of me. <laughs> That's it. I'll join you on that one. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. You go. <laughs> Nailed it. I have to tell you, I got lucky here. You know who I'm sitting? I'm sitting right opposite the fast food king of Australia yesterday at a function. I know him really well. He's got huge contacts in North America. It, I think it's going to be 20 phone calls and we'll either be dead in the water and I will have lost my $2. <laughs> but anyway, wish me luck. Andrew, your, your, your career has just hit new heights today. <laughs> you are now the I'm king the of the hand dog. dog man. <laughs> <laughs>